Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on Muzanzi Confessions. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you the latest confession that I received on a Facebook. It reads like this. Hello, my brother. Can you please post for me as anonymous and promise me that you will never reveal my identity? My story goes like this. I am a man who is aged 52 and I'm also into this business of transporting goods, the logistic business. I was given a stick of matches by this guy. This guy told me that this stick of matches that he had given me was a lucky charm to boost my business. The problem now that I am having is that I am facing breakdown challenges. I'm going to give you my story in detail. I had traveled from Gauteng going to Guiani because a friend of mine had told me that he wanted to sell his uh, Superlink flat deck trailer. So I had gone there to speak with him so that we can negotiate. On my way back, I told myself that I was going to travel through Mpo Malanga because I have some relatives there. On my way from Guiani to Mpumalanga, there was this woman who stopped me at the hiking spot. Usually, I don't pick up people, but this woman, she was really beautiful. Her skin, she was like, she was just like a colored. So, I told myself that I was going to pick her up. Maybe as time goes on, me and her, we could sort out something. As we were traveling, she then told me that originally, she is from Mozambique, but her father is a South African. As we were traveling, I could see that already she she had fallen for me because when she looked at me and I looked at her back, she would just look down and begin to smile. Eventually, she told me that she had developed feelings for me. Me, like a confused fool, I took out my phone. Then I opened my Capitec bank account. That's when our relationship started because on my bank statement, she could see that at one point in time, my bank account could be loaded something like 3.5 million rand, sometimes 2.5 million rand because at that time I had gotten hold of this contract whereby I was delivering some equipment. There was a power station that was being built in Zim and also there was a mine that was being built in Zambia. So my trucks were going there. Then out of nowhere, things just fell down. She asked me what had happened. That's when I told her that in 2020, I ventured into the logistic business and at first, everything was good. I was earning good money. Then after something like two years, everything just went down. My business was so hard. As if that was not enough, I began to supply ESCOM with coal. But those loads, nothing came out of it because the guys at the top who had supplied us with the 10 as they got arrested for corruption even though myself i was never involved in any kind of corruption in my life but for those loads i didn't get paid anything i tried to go to the lawyers but nothing happened you won't believe what happened next that mine that was being built in Zambia. We then got a contract whereby we were supposed to deliver some abnormal loads to Zambia. But I was so unfortunate that on the first load, the load tipped over. What happened is that I hired this driver. This driver lied to me that he had experienced in driving these abnormal trucks. Well, he drove very well from Gauteng. When he crossed the border, we received the first payment. It was 1.5 million rand. Then when he was into Zimbabwe, that's when he lost the lot. It was so difficult for me because I had to hire a towing truck, another truck, another trailer and also a crane to lift off the dumping truck because it had slipped off from the trailer. It was so difficult for me, my brother, when they told me that for them just to cross the border and reach the place whereby my trucks had just had an accident, they gave me a quotation of 65,000 rands and my you this company is already based in Pulukwane. This other friend of mine he used to tell me that when you are in the trucking business on a single day you can spend more than 1.5 million rands when things go bad for you and I never believe it but on this day that's when I saw that a million rands it's nothing it can be blown over in a single day because I was making payments to this company making payments to that company and mind you some of my trucks were still being loaded in Gauteng and they didn't have any fuel they were supposed to be given money for fuel for the toll gates and everything at the border and already I had blown a lot of money I sat down when I looked at my bank balance that the money that was remaining in my bank balance it was not even going to be enough 
to make sure that all of my trucks were going to cross the border and on the Zambian side the Chinese were very angry at me and I looked like a small amateur I was like a small boy now in the field as if I didn't know what I was doing even the guy who had given me this laws he called me and he said my man you have messed up big time so as I was explaining my situation to this woman who was in my car she then told me that she knew someone who would be able to help me out so later on we planned to travel back to Mpumalanga then I met one of her relatives then when I was speaking to the relative he then told me that he knew how to remove the bad luck that was on me he told me that this bad luck was from my family some of my family members they were so jealous of how my business was expanding he even blamed me and he told me that before you succeed in life you are not supposed to tell people you are only supposed to tell people when you you have already made it in life so when i told my family members that i had won this contract whereby i'll be delivering these machines in zambia one of my family members went to a sangoma and when they went to a sangoma as he was speaking with me he told me that what i can see is that there are candles these candles are lined in a circle and i can see your picture in the middle then on top of your picture there is another candle so that candle is a small candle it is burning down down as it is burning down it is also burning your picture this is how they've put bad luck on you but i cannot see this family member i can only hear her voice but i cannot see her face so this guy he didn't want to tell me who of my family members he had gone to perform this ritual because he told me that the way that he does his things he doesn't want to divide our family since it is divided already then he told me that he himself he was going to make sure that he was going to give me a stick and this stick of matches was going to give me luck and protection he also told me that the ritual that was performing and the way that he was seeing it in the spirit the bad luck that was put on top of me had removed all the luck that had been given for me since childbirth and he told me that there was no way that that luck was going to come back because already it had been swept away because they told me that after they had burned those candles then they swept away all of the ashes with the broom and he told me that without finding those ashes i can never regain my luck again so he gave me this stick of matches and he didn't tell me that this stick of matches behind it there were a lot of things that i was supposed to do he told me that no one was supposed to see this stick of matches he told me that even my wife was not supposed to see this small box of matches i thought of a place whereby i could hide this small box of matches but my wife is very nosy each and every time she goes around snooping around because she suspects me that i am after other women and yes i am someone who has a lot of girlfriends and also a lot of kids out there so she is always searching for proof even though she knows that i do this thing then i thought of an idea i told myself that i was going to the bank and get an approval and take out a car and this car it was going to be my personal car my wife she drives a very big car my kids they also have big cars so none of my family members love driving small cars so i went out and i took out a white vw polo but when i was taking out this car at the bank they advised me and told me that if i take out this car i was going to pay higher insurance cost because this car is already a high risk car and it is the most hijacked car in south africa but when you are doing things your own things you tell yourself that maybe you are more clever than what people are telling you because i looked at the bank teller and i looked at myself i told myself me i am a millionaire what does she know and understand about doing business and also at that time i was in a big rush to hide my box of matches my brother it didn't take long for that car to get hijacked and what worries me is that that small box of matches was inside the glove compartment that is the only thing that i am praying for that if they ever find that car the only thing that i just need i don't care about the car i just need that small box of matches because a lot of things are now happening sometimes i have nightmares i can dream of fighting with little people they are very small people and those guys they'll be fighting against me and they have more strength than i have have you 
ever have that feeling that when you wake up you are so tired i know that i am quite a big man and i also suffer from asthma sometimes i have trouble breathing but what is happening to me it is out of the ordinary i wake up and i feel fatigue i am so tired that i cannot even climb out of the bed i am hiding these things from my wife on the business side I'm facing a lot of challenges. I'm facing breakdown. My business is now going from hero to zero, including my first truck which I bought. So this truck, I didn't want people to use it. It's always there, just uh, standing, reminding me of where I began when I began this journey. But now I'm using that truck. For me, that truck is on my heart because it was my first truck. But this truck is the last truck now that I have. I'm looking for profits or any man of god who can help me out because now what is happening that thing of whereby i can get a lot then the person doesn't pay me in the end is really damaging me so one of my friends told me that since i don't have any loads for my truck i can try out this south african group whereby there are people or agents that give a uh, lot to people with trucks my brother i joined that group but i was scammed there was this guy he told me that he's an agent then he got me a lot i was supposed to deliver cement from a uh, hauteng going with that lot to limpopo then when i delivered uh, that cement that guy he just vanished into thin air i had trusted this guy because when i began to spoke with him he himself is an african speaking white person and i never suspected that this guy was going to scam me off this lord when i tried to contact him he was not available he just switched off his phone I bend my tires from my truck from Gauteng to Limpopo for nothing. It cost a lot of money to pour diesel into that truck from Gauteng to Limpopo. And the back load, it was an empty back load. So I made a double loss on a single load. My brother, I'm looking for anyone who can help me out. But as we speak right now, I don't have any money that I can pay someone to help me out. Some of the people, they told me that I should bring one of these so-called prophets to my house then they can cleanse my house so the other person told me that they can do it for me but the money that they are charging me is quite a lot i cannot afford it anymore i am actually thinking of selling my house so that at least maybe i can repair some of my trucks my brother my trucks i know that now they are just moving graveyards i was at the traffic department i was just checking some of the credits that i have on my trucks because i have been unable to pay some of the backlog that is in my system they told me that the money that i was supposed to pay so that i can renew the license disc on these trucks it's 78000 rands my brother these discs are about to expire and i don't know where i am going to get that money even my workers this month i was not able to pay them full salary for a truck driver I gave them 4000 rands each for the past month my brother I don't know if I'm going to survive this I think that I was just born to suffer and I was born for this bad luck to happen to me this is my story my brother that was a confession from one of our dear listeners right there he gave me his story on uh, facebook so you might be wondering why some of the times i don't respond to some messages uh, dear listeners i just want to tell you that i am here uh, to share confessions i'm not going to be the one who is going to give you these people who will tell you that they are going to give you a charm so that you can become rich why am i saying this a lot of messages come and when i read uh, those confessions um, or those messages or those voice notes someone will be telling you that my brother i have so much so much money can you please find someone who is going to make me rich i just want to tell you that if you have two thousand rands uh, uh, in your account and you want to get a uh, rich there is no way for you to get rich quick the only thing that you can do find something that you can buy and sell something in your spare time try to start out a small business do not trust these guys on facebook that are going to tell you that they have a charm to make you rich most of these guys i've spoken with them they've come to me with their confessions most of them are thieves and i'm here to warn you that be careful out there out there is a dangerous world make sure that you protect your money at all times because someone might be trying to scam you let's meet again in the following episode